Great. So today I would like to speak about Markov numbers in general. I will recall all the definitions and everything in case if you do not know them. Um, and well, um, explain a little bit what we have done together with my uh, former PhD student, uh, Mati. Okay. Um, and now I don't have control because I need to probably do like that. Yeah, fine. Um, <coughs> so first of all, we make a small introduction, then a little bit of a classical theory, and we try to put everything together uh, in that theory. And then after we put everything together, we can try to generalize what, what we have put together. Great, some history. Well, so it was written by my PhD students, so probably I even wouldn't know what would each line mean here. Okay, so of course, earlier Lagrange, they correspond to continuous fractions and periodic uh, theorems of quadratic rationality. So I think Ehlers formulated it, and Lagrange finally proved um, the second side of it. Um, so then, uh, so somehow the Riffet approximation theory is also relevant here, because here kind of we will be thinking about approximations of um, reals by rationals. Um, then Markov spectr spectrum itself, um, this is the approximation of quadratic form actually, uh, was introduced in 1875. Mm, the first, how to say, the lower bound for the spectrum was bound by Horvitz, and then, well, and then we have a nice conjecture uh, about uniqueness of the representation of the spectrum. Um, yeah, and that was all what was done for the classical, more or less, um, for the classical theory, and after there was well, there were lots of attempts to solve this very famous uniqueness conjecture, which actually generated numerous of nice articles. Um, and yeah, and then okay, so in 1938 also there was an attempt to generalize, well, say not to generalize, to ask the, a similar question in multidimensional case, um, and actually uh, it is very closely related to the Littlewood conjecture. It's, I mean. If the answer is, if one of the answers is positive, I would say then it will imply little wood conjecture. Okay, but we're not going to go to multidimensional case. Therefore, I just leave the name here without further explanation of what it is actually. So really, uh, sorry about that. But if you want, you can Google it. Probably it's in Wikipedia. There are nice explanations. <coughs> Great. So, um, so here we um, we outline a few tools that that are used in the study of the theory. Um, so there are cone matrices, we will speak about them later. Then uh, continued fractions and their geometrical approach. Um, so started from probably Jacobi, but okay, so this type of uh, continued fractions were con was first considered by Klein and Minkowski, Voronoi proposed another generalization. And then there was a big gap after which Arnold revived actually. I think he, he, he reinvented them, but then he realized that he was not the first. Um, yeah, so then uh, reduced integer matrices. Um, yeah, finally, I would like to mention a very good book by Martin Eigner, uh, Markov Theorem and 100 Years of the Uniqueness Conjecture. So, very well written. So, this author is a uh, very famous uh, author who is also authored the book of the proof from the book. So, together with Gun Gunther Ziegler, um, and of course, what to say, it's inspired by Erder. Um, anyway, uh, so. And then we a little bit contributed to, how to say it, to put the, some nice ordering in what was done before in some sense. Um, great. Um, so four main ingredients for today's talk. So Markov triples, Markov trees. So we will study that. The undefeated Markov spectrum. Um, semigroup of reduced matrices. So very nice semigroup. Maybe you have already heard about it uh, some, some, somehow before. So it's very how to say it is a little bit exotic, but very natural actually uh, set of uh, matrices. Um, and also a normal iteration of on numbers, which which is a normal, but I mean, it is very straightforward in some sense. Anyway, um, so let us start first to study the ingredients and then we will mix them together to see what will happen. So Mark, Mark, Markov triples, what is that? Okay, in 1879, by some, I mean, by some, to say by some chance, uh, Markov decided to study the following equation, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 3xyz. So, I mean, I'm not sure if there is, is it possible to make some meaning for that expression. So for me, it's like from the left-hand side, you have Euclidean, uh, how to say, square of the Euclidean norm, 
from the right hand side to have a kind of hyperbolic uh, how to say picture let's put it like that however I wouldn't put a big how to say it, uh, big sense to that because the, the degrees of this equations are different from different sides so therefore I mean it doesn't look very intuitively well geometrically intuitively for, for me um, okay and I have lost my mouth finally great so solutions of Markov equation and Markov triple well it turns out that one can easily substitute one 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 and see that if you add one plus one plus one you will have three so the same will happen for the one two one one five two etc um, and there is uh, so there is a very nice definition which is called Markov automaton um, that actually takes three points a b c sorry three in, three well integers whatever so if you want r3 if you want okay three numbers and it leaves two of them and it actually third is replaced by three a b minus c so this is actually a kind of the uh, um, well if you aware about cluster algebras so this is one of the main iteration which defines the corresponding uh, cluster algebras uh, but it doesn't matter for us because it's just manipulation on, on triples of numbers uh, and also what we are allowed to do we are allowed to swap the coordinates anyway as, as we like yeah I mean there is no point to swap L and B as it, I mean small sense to swap them uh, but A and C is rather dramatic if we, if we swap them for B and C okay so Oh yes. oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes 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 so you can a kind of you can make some substitutions here so you see the good thing that any of the numbers I mean any of the variables x y and z I actually gives you quadratic um how to say it uh, quadratic structure quadratic polynomial here and such method actually could be used for many other polynomials whenever you you how to say it restricts to the stuff to um to one of the variables if it's quadratic so then you have can have a similar structure there could be some analogous trees but maybe so the cycles maybe there are several of them I mean this is a very nice uh, also research area um but I'm not really very familiar with it so it's better to ask my PhD students I mean former PhD students um okay generating Markov triple so that's how we generate them um so and now we have a very funny proposition which I don't know how to prove which I wouldn't prove it here at least let's put it like that uh, starting with any Markov triple so that automaton so if you do these steps in any combination you like uh, then you can you can reach any other Markov triple so Markov triple is just a triple that is a solution yep, of the original equation um, one 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 so you see that the same one 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 there is no chase chance to swap them so we go to one to one therefore um this is three times one times one minus one um so then we can have either one one two or one to one or one at, at the end so if we have one at the end then actually go back so if you have two at the end then you go further to one to five so now you have three choices because we have one we have two and we have five that we can put at the end um and two of them will advance our three and one of them will go back again so it's very nice how to say it I don't know some, some funny computer game when you can travel back and forth from different between different rooms um, and we go further we go further so that's the way how the um, how this tree is generated so we call it binary rooted Markov tree I mean it's not really binary but when you exclude that stuff it starts to be binary um, oh thank you thanks great um, so yes now a kind of, I'm sorry so sometimes I will be a, a kind of jumping from one subject to another subject so I hope you are fine with that so because now we are going to discuss a little bit Markov spectrum um, what we are doing now so we are taking the form so indefinite form so basically it is a form that is decomposable as a two linear as two linear factors in in R2 yes 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 completely different it's completely different so it's just just forget about the rest of the kind of so yeah I mean depends on the time but yeah maybe well at some point I should so great 
<laughs> um, so let us define let's define a very funny uh, number which is infimum for all integer pairs except the origin. Yeah. So basically, what is that? What is this? A kind of what's this? Um, how to say it? Quadratic form? How does it look like? Oh yeah, I need to to understand. So that part is visible probably. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, th these are your two linear factors. And of course, if your linear factor has at least one integer point, then you have zero here because infimum of the absolute value, so it will uh, include zero. Therefore, it would be just zero. Uh, otherwise, you might you might have some non-zero actually um, infimum. So if you don't have integer points, of course, here. So maybe it would be here, for instance, the smallest possible value, or maybe it will be attained at infinity. I don't know. Great. So discriminant is as usual, b square minus 4ac. Um, so, so you can think of it as a discriminant or just of this normalizator if you want. Um, great. So now the Markov element. Well, so what happens if we multiply the form itself uh, by some number, all the coefficients? So basically the values will be multiplied by the squares of that coefficient. Um, so it, it would be really... Uh, it would be really great to divide by the determinant and then to a kind of to normalize with respect to that. However, of course, you can. Well, I mean, this is at least as it is done in Markov theory. Maybe there are some other normalizations. So why this one is the best? I do not. Well, okay, it's the best because it was proposed by Markov probably. So, but it's a kind of a logical thing to to do. Okay, maybe you can define by a square. I don't know. Anyway, uh, by a sorry. Um, so, Markov spectrum would be, by chance, the inverse to that. I really would like prefer to have infimum on the top, but by some reason, I mean, it's probably only me who would like to do that. So, therefore, I will follow the standard notation and I will take one over m. Great. And we just collect all possible, um, all possible, so we just take one form, we have one number, we take one over m. The second form, the third form, and I mean, so we have computer and transfinite induction that can go through all of the forms and generate us this let the set uh, m the set subset of positive non-negative I mean doesn't matter <laughs> yeah subset of reals example so if you take this uh, well I mean of course we, are, we would be mostly working with uh, the forms with integer coefficients so they will be representing quadratic rationals actually um, so here we have root 2 to 1 over 5. So then, so the second one is actually, this is the main example. This is golden ratio. So here we have, um, so the slopes would be golden ratio and the conjugate, but the, well, so the Markov number would be actually square root of 5. So, um, Discriminant is positive, yeah, because otherwise you do not have that stuff here. And technically, I mean, there is no point to restrict it. You can take negative discriminant, whatever you like, but a kind of... It's not me, it's Markov restricted. Yes, 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 because, I mean, why not to consider the circle? So, I mean, that's okay. So, x squared plus y squared equal to zero, you can compute everything here. No, no, so for, for that... Uh, anyway, so you, you, can, you can just consider all of them. So there is no actually. So currently we don't use that with this. But okay, but now we start when we go to Markov spectrum. So now we exclude everything which is not. But I think there is no too many different non how to say it, non uh non -con congruent, say less well, phototic, um complex and and rational ones. But okay, so that's maybe not for today. Great, so the first the first okay, so the spectrum. Yeah, okay, maybe sometimes you have, um, so sorry, you don't have zero because you have infinity, so we take one over m. Uh, so the first possible number that you have uh, here would be root five. So therefore, Igor was actually correct when he was saying that it's positive numbers. So, um, and this is due to Hurwitz. So he was the first who proved that any, well, actually it was that form y square plus xy minus x square, or I don't know, maybe it was a slope of coordinates. Uh, so where you have this root 5. Uh, but if you write any other form, so you will have either root 5 or greater number as the Markov spectrum. So actually this is a kind of the worst approximable quadratic form. 
by, by the values in some sense. Um, so the next one, okay, so the next one is root eight, um, and there are lots of others. Um, and basically Markov, I think he completed the, the first who completed this classification. Um, and it turns out that, that actually you have first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, etc. So they are all enumerated. So actually it's not just some strange set, but it's just a sequence and the spectra before three is actually discrete. So well, excluding three of course. And three is the first limiting point. Great, so this is our green light zone and we will be living there. Um, so then there is um, a very funny number which is called a uh, Feynman constant. Uh, please let me keep reading it, but probably I could manage to do it, I don't know. So, um, so also what I wanted to say that it is believed that it is correct, but I think um, so it's not really, the paper is not really checked by many mathematicians, let, let's put it like that. So, but anyway, so from this constant, uh, we have, uh, well, zone, the zone in red. Uh, so, so here we have uh, everywhere then, uh, everywhere then, if you think about integer forms or if you think about rational forms. Yeah, I don't know. So here there is a dis difference between uh, Lagrange and Markov spectrum, which I'm not going to discuss, but it's more or less everything there. Let's think about the closure. Um, and Does it sound to you so? Uh, I mean, so. Three? So original equation is like that. But you can take real, but even if you take non-real, even if it's non-real, I mean complex one. So if you take integer ones, so then basically you will have the, the in the complement you will have the same. Three. So you close it, it starts to be uncountable. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, so for us it's important the discrete, non-discrete, etc. So I mean, yeah, I mean, <coughs> yeah, so there are lots of different types of questions that could be asked here. And so some of them are coming to dynamical systems to house those dimension, of course. Um, and so like, for instance, in Warwick, they have a big group who is studying such things there. Yes, it, it is here. Oh, uh, sorry. Slightly. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, but have a look. So it's a very good example. So you slightly change coefficient. This means that you make a little bit different slope. But now have a look, you, the point, I mean, if you go further, the point which was here starts to be there. I mean, so small here, but as, 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 as big. As, no, no, it's a very nice, uh, topologically, it's very nice how to say it. Um, this problem is rather interesting, I would say if you think uh, from the perspective. Okay, so does it answer your question? Great. Uh, so there is also the yellow, yellow how to say it, um, part, which, which, I, which actually is shown like that. Um, and I would like to say there are some interesting pieces, like there is some gap between square root of 12 and square root of 13. And so there are some other stuff when you have different sort of dimensions, etc. cetera. So um, it's, there are lots of things which are known there and I encourage you to have a look and the kind of to, to go there, but so I'm not interested in that for, 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 for today at least. Um, great, so we will be only uh, considering discrete spectrum and we will try to, uh, to, to get to see how we can generate actually these numbers. Great, semi-group of reduced matrices. So again, so another break, so take Coca-Cola, whatever. Uh, we have, um, so we have the third ingredient which is different from the previous ones. Um, great, so first of all, two matrices, I said that conjugate or uh, similar. Uh, if there exists X such that B is equal to X, A, X inverse, so basically the best way to think about it is that you make, um, how to say, it, you change the basis, yeah? So basically, have a look, when I was saying, so, okay, we have this equation, let's compute value here of this equation, yeah? But now I'm saying, but this equation is written in coordinates. But there is no point to write equations and coordinates because it's it's a function, functional if you want, whatever mapping. So basically, it doesn't depend on the coordinates. So if you take another coordinate, 
So the value at this point would be the same, isn't it? Yeah, so so x is SL to z, yeah. So it's or dl to z, but it's I think it's the same. So so plus my determinant plus minus one is like that. Um okay, great. So well okay, so this is basically what you do when you compute exponent of a matrix. So if you want to do component exponent, so what would you do? Of course, you go to the Jordan normal form, and then you have formulas for that. So basically, what I'm th what, what what the idea here is basically to do the same. So to reduce arbitrary um, arbitrary quadratic forms to some specific ones. Well, okay. So in this case, we have matrices. Okay, um, great. And so, what would be the normal forms with respect to this conjugation? Well, so in the complex case, we have just three representatives. So there are three uh, classes. They correspond to symmetries. One of them would be uh, that four symmetries. Another would be the six, that six symmetries. Last one um, would be just normal um, reflection. Um, then totally real case. This is Gauss reduction theory, and this is the most important and interesting case, which we will study. Him. And also some degenerate case of double roots, which is not interesting. I mean, so for us, basically here you would have points uh, on the uh, on the zero locus, so therefore you will have only zero and one over zero will give you infinity value for the Markov spectrum. Great. Um, so what so what would be the normal form? So yeah, I mean we can't take here Jordan normal forms because the coordinate trans transformation would not be integers. But it turns out that we can have another funny. Oh, now I'm trying to explain what are the reduced uh, matrices for with respect to a uh, group of integer linear transformations. I'll do that. So, so it, this is ingredient. It's another ingredient. Mm -hmm. It's it, I'm so my problem is Lego, so it's not another, another building block. <laughs> they will come together then. Yes, 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 yes. It's another part. I'm sorry. So there would be probably one more part. So. Anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the funny thing about this uh, set is actually that it's not just a set, it's um, a semi-group because the product of these two matrices will, will be the same matrix. So if you check P is greater than P and greater equal than A for all three of them. Um, fine. So the space of reduced matrices form a semi-group. Great. Um, so in final, final ingredient, so before Igor fall asleep, uh, this is animal, uh, uh, animal iteration on numbers. So, so first of all, what, what are continuous fractions? So I'm, I don't know if you're aware of that. So basically, you take the number, you take integer part of it, you reverse it, five over two. You take integer part, you reverse it, take integer part. Right? So at some point, you end up with something which is like that, one, two, two. Um, or you can continue and also decompose the last element as one over one plus n minus one. Yeah. Great. And this would be, such expressions would be uh, ordinary continuous fractions. And we have always one uh, odd continuous fraction with odd number elements and one even continuous fraction with even number elements. Uh, great. So any rational number has a unique odd and unique um, even, and the rational has just one infinite. Great. <coughs> So now another operation which we will be using, that would be a, uh, a normal star summation. So basically, uh, there is a famous Lagrange theorem stating that quadratic rationalities, um, they actually can be written as continuous fractions periodically. First, there would be some pre-period, and then it would be periodic. So it's eventually periodic, uh, how to say it, writing. Um, but of course, you can consider only the numbers when you have, you do not have periods and that's what we are going to take and a normal summation would be defined only for them so you can take two periods basically and you can just well concatenate them so take both of them yes and there is an example for instance you can take periodic one with one one and two two and you get one one two two yes so like if you multiply one plus square root five over two times one plus square root two you have that stuff. Um, and of course, it's time to agree to say, oh, but there is a, a big uh, difference in choices of these periods because you can take off length two, off length three. But that's true. So star summation is not uniquely defined. So 
defining the length of the period and the starting position of the period yeah so you can you will have different information here great uh, so we have all the lego so there is nothing else in the amazon delivery so now let us only for purely periodic yes so how did i manage to go in the very beginning anyway um yes okay okay you're right yeah you're right so you're right so for the starting period you can you can start in this because i'm also thinking in my head probably periodic but okay so yeah yeah so here of course there is a starting sorry here's the starting point you're right yeah yes 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 yeah i mean so i think uh i think you're both correct here so when everything is discussing about definitions it's a kind of everyone is correct because there's nothing to own so, uh great so markov triples and forms um great so now we go back to markov triples and we relate to forms and whatever so um so there is a theorem by markov that markov spectrum by some reason the one which is defined by this to say it linear linear stuff is actually can be constructed um so the markov spectrum below three discrete and consists of the following numbers so now the numbers are precisely the solution of the markov equation because in the past this stuff was not related to markov equation actually to the x square plus y square plus f square equals to 3 x y z but from this moment so from 1879 so this starts to be related um great and so here this is one typo which i have forgot did not manage to collect here should be u so the first coordinate defines u so this is the way how it should be defined and here this equation defines then v so while while once they are defined you can write down the form so there is well okay so probably i should say there is a straightforward uh, way to write down the form starting from number uh, starting from the triples m1 m and m2 so usually m is considered to be the, the largest actually middle one is usually considered to be the largest great and then of course you can compute the markov number and it would be like that <laughs> yes 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 you take the mean the smallest positive one here yes uh, i think no as far as i remember they are, they, are, they would be similar the forms would be similar so it's just linear change of coordinates as far as i remember so because yeah because basically yeah so so i think for markov it would be just you should took the, take the smallest one but but yeah so the smallest among you see here you have plus minus yeah so it, it should be really the smallest up so. <coughs> yeah but I think it should be both. They should be for all of them. Should should give you the the same value of the Markov number. But the form here, of course, would be a little bit different. Um, great. So now we start with a sequence of integers, and now the sequence would be doubly side in double side infinite, not just one side, but both. Um, so and of course we can't write one continuous fraction for it, but we can write two continuous fractions for it. We can cut it and split it and go to different directions to write the sum of the two continuous fractions but as you say that now we do not have the starting point yeah so it's your question so now we don't have starting point and therefore we can cut everywhere but we need to find the supremum of this guy yeah so then so here are finding the supremum um okay and so the Markov spectrum so this proposition by Piron is actually would be precisely uh all side suprema so and we will see why they're linked a little bit later um example so if we take alpha uh infinite sequence with period two two one one both sides yeah so then after splitting actually that would be the answer so and the minimum is sorry supremum is attained at when you split two two one one and yeah and the other side uh so should i draw it two two one one two two one 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 and you split split here yeah um okay and this is our one of our elements of this third one probably um 
great. So for golden ratio, you have um, root of five here. So this would be go golden ratio. This would be conjugate to golden ratio. Well, as far as I remember, they, they should be conjugate here. But anyway, so uh, and then you have just root five. Great. Reduced matrices and continuous fraction. So you see, I, I'm trying now to fit all the particles which I have in order to uh, to build one big tower. Um, okay, so this is our this is our linear form now. Yes, so this is our linear form, uh, but it is defined actually not as a form, but it is defined as eigenlines of some operators with integer coefficient. Okay, so you take integer matrix. Of course, it has invariant lines, and you have a direct correspondence between matrices and um, and such equations, but up to scalar, of course. Great. So, but scalar is killed by the normalizator anyway. Uh, then we take all integer points um, in one of the cones which is, which are sitting here. So we take all integer points here, and we are, we would be interested only in the boundary of the convex hull. Okay. So we have four of them, of course. So for the for the right one, for the left one, top and bottom one. Um, great. So now uh, we do not need just this um, picture, but we also would like to have some nice invariants there. And I said I propose the first. So I I remove everything by by that angle. Take all integer points here. Take the boundary of the convex hull. Convex hull of integer. Yes, excluding zero. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so now I would like a little bit to. Uh, to make some fun with this uh, boundary, so I would like, for instance, to draw all integer lengths of the corresponding segments. So, for instance, here we have yeah two yeah because it's twice greater than the minimal vector here, minimal integer vector. So here we have three because it's one, two, three. So here we have again two. So here we have one yeah because this is another slope actually. Um, great, but it's not 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 all because. Also, I would like to put here the values of the angles. The simplest way to see them is actually forget about lattice geometry and just to draw to make determinant of that vector of the primitive integer vector here and the primitive integer vector here. So by definition, the determinant of the two vectors will give you um, integer sign. So integer angle or integer sign, yeah, is the index of the sublattice generated by these two vectors in the lattice of all integers. If you want invariant definition, so otherwise, really, I, I I'm happy to use determinant definition. So just my right determinant that you have here one minus so one one, and here two minus one, and determinant would be either three or minus three, but then you take normal for three. Okay? Do you believe me? Great. So uh, let's go further. So geometric continuous fraction. Yeah. Okay. So um well so first of all have a look the if you if you actually look more accurate here you see that the this how to say it the all, all the numbers here would be the, would give you the same sequence as one one three two one one yep and here it would be two one one three two one etc at everywhere so therefore actually one of the sequences defines everything what we need um and also for the case of SL to Z matrices, so all integer entries and determinants plus one, so you will have some periods here. So it would be periodic actually, like in this case, by the way. So we have one, one, three, two, and then we get for, we have again one, one, and three, two also go further. Great. Um, yes. Yeah. So angle. So you are asking about what is this angle? Yeah. So yeah. So please. Um, so you have one one. And do you play chess? So you play the following very funny game. You put here bishop, and the bishop can go either this way or that way. So then the question: How many bishops you should play? You should put put on the uh, chessboard if you want to cover all the field. So here you have to put three bishops.
but, but better with this. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, determinant is the best. Yeah, of course, you have one one, and I mean, it's really, yeah, I mean, I don't know, so formula is also simple thing to play with. Anyway, let's go further. Great. Uh, so a period um, up to shift would be a complete invariant of conjugative lasso of operator. So actually, uh, there is only one picture with such period, basically up to change of coordinates. If you have these sequences, um, then it would be just one value. So it's a kind of normal form in some sense, the period. And it is for every sequence you can find the matrix, and for every matrix you can find the sequence. Um, okay, great. And and now there is a link between this strange formula, which we have considered when you have doubly periodic sequences splitted here, and the vertices of these actually boundaries. And this is precisely, so these numbers which are here, this is precisely your sequence, which you do in order to uh, define the Markov number. So Markov number over, so the minimum, sorry, over the uh, root of determinant would be precisely well, on chemo of 1 over what we have seen. So these would be the values to be honest in all uh, vertices of the, of this, uh, of the boundary. So before it was supremum and it was reversed. So the two terms, the first, the second, sorry, and this was actually removed and put inside here. Yeah, sorry, it's another form, but it's, it's very easy to prove that they are the same. So anyway, uh, then, yeah, great. So mark of element is attained at the vertex. Okay, that's what I already said. Great. So now, but now, uh, so this is true only. Only if you work with reduced iterators, so only with reduced iterators. Um, so these are the iterators with b greater than b greater than greater equal than a. So for, for the others, you will have to compute. Um, yeah, I mean, sorry, I should say that. Uh, yeah, sorry, if you do, of course, geometrically, then it works fine. But now we will show how to write directly from the coordinates of the matrix how to write down this LLL sequences. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. Great, so the number of reduced matrices in the, in the conjugacy class uh, is not as in Euclidean, well, in, in the standard, sorry, um, case of reduced matrices when you have just one. So you have, actually, if your period is k, then the minimal one is k, then you have diff k different reduced matrices. Um, and actually, um, for a reduced iterator like that, you can immediately, so you can write down, first of all, b over c in continuous fraction, if you take, well, n divisible by 2 here, um, in case a determinant is 1, and if a determinant is 1, not 1, I would like to skip it for, for now. Um, so then, basically, precisely this sequence, a1, a2, a n, that n, would be the period of the corresponding defining long sequence, yeah? So this is LLS. I mean, if c is equal to 0, then a and b is equal to 0, it is equal to 1, sorry. And then you have a problem that here, uh, whatever. So, so here you have a problem, but I mean, so technically, if a and b is equal to 1, then you have um, so matrix with rational values, and then you have one point here, and then you will have infinite values. So, so it, it's fine, but just it's not in, in the class which we are looking for, but, but that's okay. So thank you for the question, because here it's, I mean, so it's not included in this theorem, but, but I mean, so anyway. Um, <coughs> so now Markov theory in one diagram. Great. So, okay, so for now, we can start with any sequence, and we can go to matrix. So how to go to matrix? So basically, uh, there is a very nice formula, so which is called continuance. So continuance is actually numerator of continuous fraction, yeah? So do, do you know what is continuance? So like, for instance, if we have continuous fraction A plus 1 over B, so this is AB plus 1 over B, so then AB plus 1 is continuance of A and B. Okay? But of course, you can do that with any, uh, I mean, not with two numbers, but with 25 numbers, and then you have another rational function, and the numerator would be the continuance. Yeah? So now here we have actually K1 and minus 1, so there are some letters, so like k, what does it mean that we have k1 n minus 1, for instance, of a1, etc., an. 
So this means that we just disregard the last one. We just take the everything. So that would be just continuous from a one, etc. A n minus one. So if we write here k two, then we also ignore the first element here. So basically, so here we start from a two. Okay. So you can write matrix. So you don't need to, to recall this formula, but just believe me that there is an easy formula for the coefficients of, of, of the matrix. So you can just having the, the sequence, you immediately write all four numbers. I mean, immediately means whatever logarithmic time is solving. Yeah, maybe. Yes, 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 yes. I should be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I, I should indeed correct that. Great. Yeah. Okay. So now how to go back? So how to go back? We already have seen that. So we take D over C. So D over C and write continuous fraction and we are here. Oops, sorry. Um, I mean, in a way you're right. In a way you're right. Yeah. So so here would be always reduced matrix. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So basically th that would be so yeah. So here we'll set all possible sequences. So probably we restrict to only even ones, but yeah, so I think all possible. So here we have reduced matrices. Yeah. Great. Um, so now we can define again the quadratic form like that. And so C goes from num from the sequence to here. Again, we are for continuous. So there is some formula where the simple again. Uh, so for D, I don't know, by, by some reason we didn't find the map. Maybe we were lazy, but so you need to, to travel around. So and now for the last one, so for E, the formula is very simple. So E, so you have, I mean, it's already here. You see that one is here. So 3, 4, 4 is nowhere. So 2, 4, 8 is here. 3, 4, 4 would be the difference. Um, and F is a little bit more complicated because you have less data to generate more data. So therefore, you have to make some dances there. Um, great. So now, okay, so that was um, that was this triple sequences, matrices, and forms. So this is what was Igor was actually asking me in the very beginning, how they're related. So that's the moment when we collect everything together. Um, so now there is also the Markov number, which is a solution of equation. And you, you can easily see it from here or from there. Um, so, so this number can be seen as a continuum here. So the, the continuum when you exclude the last element. So just you remove that one and, and do the continuum. Um, so this is P. OK, so Q. So can we have having a number? It determ determine the sequence which defines it. Actually, we don't know because this is one of the possible formulations of the uniqueness conjecture. If, if, if this kind of link is unique. Uh, but we will discuss it at the very end of the talk. Um, so then, from here to there is also rather straightforward. Uh, you take the first coefficient here or the values of one zero if you want. So that would be again one hundred ninety four. Um, so okay, we can't return back again would be strange if we can. Um, and finally, the last one, traditionally, it is defined as a trace of the matrix over three. But I, again, so I would recommend only to consider the lower element. That's, that's fine. Um, great. So what else do we have? We have also Markov value. So this is, so the number should be divided by um, discriminant. So then, well, again, we have some formulas here, there, and over here. And over there. Well, I mean, these formulas are rather simple, so um, I don't want to discuss them because the kind of relation between these two numbers is not very complicated. So, therefore, I would just, well, maybe we can more focus on that one. So, th this is the number of the m on the Markov spectrum because this is number which is which belongs to the triples of solutions, yeah, of the Markov equation. And this is the Markov spectrum. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. It is. In terms of Markov triples, okay. So in terms of Markov triples, there is no uh, conjecture, but okay. So it's it's more or less like that. So uh, there exists a unique Markov triple. Yeah, let's put it like that. Uh, such that so okay. So given the Markov number, there exists a unique Markov triple with this number to be maximal. Yeah. 
So that could be one of the possible solutions. Oh, sorry, one of the possible um, formulations. But there are lots of formulations actually, and so here are three of them. Um, well, okay, so the, this diagram, so there are different parts in the literature, and of course in the book uh, by Eigner, so there are lots of things, but, well, I think we collected that together, uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, so, but in, in general, I think that this diagram is very useful to, to look at it when you think about Markov numbers. Great, um, so we have actually, um, in this diagram, we have three uh, elephants here, matrices, reduced matrices, sorry, uh, re um, so special forms here, this type of forms, and well, this type of sequences. Um, so how do they relate? So if ABC is a Markov triple, ABC, so if these three numbers are not Markov triples, yeah. So here is one, of course, but for every number you have I its, uh, its personal diagram, yeah. Uh, then actually it turns out that I uh, see that, that the, how to say, the corresponding period, the sequence, here would be concatenation of these two. Uh, and the matrix, the reduced matrix, would be the product of reduced matrices in the triples, yeah? So that's the way how they're related in the triples. Okay. Um, well, and this is how we can build them. So we have one, one, one that are represented by periodic. Okay, that's fine, yeah, so that's okay. Uh, so. Yeah, so what I want to say, then you have one, 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 so then you have one, one, two, two, one, one, but then you start to concatenate them, yeah? So that's the way how you build the three. Okay, so how many minutes do I have for finishing? One minute, great. That's fine. That's great, that's great, that's okay. So, um, no, but that was the most important. So what I wanted to say that, have a look, you have here one, one, and two, two, but actually the question is, uh, can we replace this one, one, and two, two by some other words. And it turns out that if you just replace it, you have some nonsense at some point. You wouldn't reconstruct the matrix. But uh, if your uh, actually, um, so if your words, so we can compare words saying that the first word is smaller than, the, the first sequence is smaller than the other one if the corresponding continuous fraction is smaller than, than the second one. So, um, oh, how did I go there? So we are approaching, yes, 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 yes. Very good. So we are approaching it. So, um, okay, so, um, so, okay, so there are several conditions. Uh, let me put it like that. So there are several conditions that should be fulfilled if the tree actually will repeat, repeat its properties, okay? So let me say it like that. And, um, yeah, so for more details, uh, I would encourage to write in an email. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. So, okay, so for some sequences, th that works. I mean, just it's not that important because we didn't study completely all, all of the set of sequences. But for instance, you can have, you can take one, one, three, two, one, one, two, three, okay? So they could be palindromic, but could be lo long ones, yeah? Um, and then you can build a tree. So, for instance, not with one, one, two, two, but you can also, in other would be one, one, three, three. You can build a similar sequence. Um, and for the similar sequence, most of the formulas will work. Uh, and like one one four 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 also another example. Uh, so you see this this actually um, so the the um, how to say it the table which we have considered it it completely it, it is roughly the same but we have lost of course some of uh, so some just small number of errors we have lost them for for another trees but most of them are preserved which is a good thing actually great um, and now just to finish, I would like with the generalized Markov conjecture. So the one, the Markov conjecture, that so the uniqueness conjecture, it was saying that in the Markov tree, what triples you have only one maximum number, yeah? But we can ask, of course, this question for another, for another numbers, for another sequences, sorry, yeah? And, new. Um, and it turns out that there, is, there are counterexamples to that conjecture. And for instance, um, for instance, for, uh, or 4, 11, 11, yeah? So you have tons of them, and this is one of the examples. So when you have, you have the same number here, but different numbers there. So uh, why this counterexample is a kind of important for the main conjecture? Because if you, if you have some proof 
for the original conjecture. Then you can check what kind of specific data about one months and two twos you have used. Because if you use some analytic general stuff, it should have been applied also to for four eleven eleven as well. And then you prove also that there is no example here. So then you have for example to your so basically what I wanted to say that the proof of original mar uniqueness conjecture uh, should really be very specific to ones and twos. So it, it doesn't admit some some a kind of general proofs. Well, so this is a kind of philosophical conclusion which I would like to say at the very end of my talk and to thank the speakers for so sorry to the listeners too. <laughs> The previous one, maybe there was. Oh, oh it was 50 minutes. A very pretty number into a lot of uh, numbers. And, uh, uh, but the point is there's a famous conjecture, which uh, I don't have time to explain why, but it's essentially proof. Uh, and, uh, and there is a uh, there's a finite number of orbits that that uh, that one needs to choose. Yes, 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 yes. That's true. Yeah. Uh, recent fantastic progress in number theory by uh, 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 Borgian, Gamble, Sarnak on one hand, and Chen on the other hand, essentially killed it. And uh, what the speaker did uh, with the course of generalized it and showed that the generalized conjecture. Yeah, and also probably I would also to add that it's not only about that, it's more about the structure that you have and the kind of, so it's a kind of this mark of three is not just one tree, it's a forest. So, and yet the, the, the main tree maybe is of course on the hill and you see it from everywhere, but the kind of, there are some other trees and they also have these nice properties. Uh, problem to uh, four powers instead of three powers and that turned out to be wrong. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course, yes. Anyway, more questions. <laughs> that, that's true, yeah. Any questions? Yep. Okay. I, mean, I, I want to talk about soft algebras. This cool trick where you replace every number with a continuing fraction, well, the operation becomes like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cluster algebras, I think they, they like very much this slide, which I skipped for cluster algebras, yeah? So basically starting from three numbers and three sequences. So, I mean, for generalized three, you have to go to sequences also, yeah? You have to use all of them. Then the operation defining it would be actually, so you leave, of course, the first two, yeah? Like it was in the first one. So then you take the concatenation of the sequences, yeah? And then you take this very strange, strange formula, so which is, um, well, so which is a kind of continuant of, this sequence a plus a uh, over continued just of a b minus c and so for the case of uh, markov tree by some reason you always you always have um that stuff to be equal to 3a okay? so it's a kind of uh, so this this relation can be generalized it's not very straightforward um yeah but what i mean so but yeah of course so when when you actually deal with Markov numbers, you can write here just 3a, and to be honest, you can forget about alpha, beta, and gamma, which was nice. So here you have to keep um, the, the representative. Probably this is also because there is no this uniqueness, you see, so maybe it's partly because of that. So you have, you can't actually erase that. Yeah. For, for, one, for, for one and two, you can erase, yes. Yeah, and this is basically the main definition to generate cluster algebra. The creation, I think.